I know it can be a little scary working with new types of fabrics, but I encourage you to get outside of your comfort zone for this project. This bag is ideal for waterproof fabrics such as laminated cotton and wax canvas. And before we get started, I'd like to share some tips and tricks for sewing with these materials. I know that you'll be impressed with the results, so let's jump right in. First, I want to talk to you about laminated cotton. Either you can buy it with the laminated coating already adhered, or you can even make your own laminated fabric. Also, you can find laminated cotton in a gloss or even a matte finish. I purchased my laminated cotton from my friend Tracy at Splash Fabrics. She has the softest matte finish laminated cottons and they are a dream to sew. My machine never has any issues sewing through her fabrics and what's nice is that even though the fabric has a thicker coating on it, it's very pliable and easy to fold and sew through. The coating acts like an interfacing, so normally in bag making you need to fuse a layer of interfacing to the back to help stabilize your fabric. However, with laminated cotton, you don't need to add interfacing, so the fabric saves you a step in the process. A few notions that I like to keep handy when sewing with laminated cotton are scotch tape or paper tape, basting tape, pattern weights for cutting out pattern pieces, polyester thread, a universal needle size 8012 or 9014, a Teflon foot, wonder clips, and a seam roller or stiletto for pressing seams. I don't recommend using pins on laminated cotton because they'll leave a permanent hole. If you do use pins, then only pin within the seam allowance. Also, you want to use a longer stitch length, such as three millimeters, because a shorter stitch length will add more holes and weaken the seam. If you need to iron laminated cotton for any reason, make sure you iron from the wrong side on a dry or low heat setting, and also use a press cloth to protect your iron. You wouldn't want to accidentally touch your iron to the laminate and melt it to your iron. If you wanted to make your own laminated fabrics, simply choose any cotton fabric and then you'll also need some iron-on vinyl. Personally, I think you'll be much happier with the quality of pre-laminated fabrics, but it's a great option if there's a print that you can't find and you can make your own. Again, you can choose between a gloss or a matte finish. We do have both options available on our site if you're interested in trying some. And you'll just follow the instructions from the manufacturer to fuse it to your cotton. Next, I want to talk to you about wax canvas. Again, you can buy pre-waxed fabric or you can even wax your own. It's water resistant, so it's a great option if you plan on using this bag outdoors. A few notions that I like to keep handy when sewing with wax canvas are a hair marker, for marking your fabric, polyester thread, a denim needle size 116, wonder clips, and a seam roller or a bone folder for pressing seams and creasing the fabric. You can pin wax canvas, but sometimes the thickness is a little bit difficult to pin through, so wonder clips work best. Also, you'll want to increase your stitch length to a longer stitch, such as three millimeters. Wax canvas is stiffer than regular canvas, but that doesn't mean it's more difficult to sew with. It's actually very easy to work with. It feeds through your machine easily and doesn't have a lot of stretch or movement, so it's easy to control. If you do need more stability, make sure to use a sew-in stabilizer or to fuse any interfacing to the lining. Wax canvas can be ironed, but there really isn't a reason to. The wrinkles in the fabric will keep coming back and they actually help the fabric look more like an aged leather. Appreciate the wrinkles in the fabric instead of trying to get rid of them. But if you do want to iron the fabric, make sure you use a medium setting and a press cloth to avoid getting any wax on your iron. Otherwise, you can try using a blow dryer to remove any unwanted wrinkles. Just be careful to not heat any particular spot too long. One other very important tip is to clean your machine after sewing with wax canvas. The wax can build up on the feed dogs and your needle, 
so make sure to thoroughly clean your machine before moving on to your next project. If you want to make your own wax fabrics, you'll need a heavy duty bar of fabric wax. The process is pretty labor intensive, so you may want to stick with the pre-wax fabrics. If you do want to try waxing your own fabric, there are lots of tutorials online and on YouTube to show you how. But we're not going to get into that process right now. Instead, we're going to get started on our project. If you're using any other fabric besides laminated cotton or wax canvas, you're going to want to add some interfacing to the wrong side. Cut the pieces according to the pattern and center and fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of each coordinating main fabric piece. Follow the instructions from the manufacturer of your interfacing for fusing instructions. With right sides up, position the main fabric front over the coordinating foam front piece and align all edges. It's helpful to use basting spray or sewing clips to hold the layers together while sewing. Try using a walking foot or a Teflon foot to help sewing over the laminated cotton or wax canvas. Top stitch main fabric to foam with an eighth inch from all edges. Then you repeat for the remaining coordinating main fabric and foam pieces. After sewing, trim any excess foam even with the edges of the fabric. If you plan to make your bag into a cooler or an insulated lunchbox, you'll want to add the Insulbrite to the coordinating lining pieces the same way that we added the foam to the main fabric pieces. Fold each handle in half to find the center. Mark 5 inches from each side of the center. Fold each handle in half lengthwise and top stitch an eighth inch from the edge in between the marks. Start by sewing across the handle, then top stitch an eighth inch from the edge in between the marks. With wrong sides together, fold each slip pocket in half so it measures 7 inches wide and 6 inches high. Top stitch a quarter inch from the top folded edge. Next, with right sides up, center one slip pocket along the bottom edge of the main fabric front and one slip pocket on the main fabric back. Sew the sides and bottom edge of each pocket in place an eighth inch from the edges. Your pocket should be about three and a half inches from each of the side edges of the front and the back, if that helps with centering. If you're using laminated cotton or wax canvas, you won't want to use pins. Instead, you could use paper tape or basting tape to help hold the pocket in place as you sew. Next, with right sides up, position one handle on the main fabric front and align the bottom raw edges. The outer edges of the handle should be two and a half inches in from each side. Make sure that your handle isn't twisted. Then top stitch both length sides of the strap with one eighth inch seam allowance, stopping seven and a half inches up from the bottom edge and top stitching across the strap. If you'd like, at the top of the strap, you can stitch a box with an X in the middle for reinforcement. Once one handle is attached, you repeat to attach the remaining handle on the main fabric back. Insert the female half of a magnetic snap on each side pocket. Start by taking your washer and measure four and a half inches up from the bottom center. Then you'll mark the slits of the washer. Take a seam ripper and cut each of the slits. Poke the prongs of the magnetic snap through the slits from the right side to the wrong side. Flip your project over to the wrong side. Add the washer to the back side of the prongs and bend the prongs outwards. If you'd like, you can iron a scrap of interfacing against the wrong side of the snap to prevent the prongs from rubbing against your fabric. Then, with wrong sides together, fold your side pocket in half so it measures 9 inches wide and 6 inches high. Top stitch a quarter inch from the top folded edge. On the top and bottom edges of each side pocket, mark 2 inches and three inches in from each side. Label the marks A, B, C, and D from left to right. With wrong sides together, match marks A and B and fold the excess fabric towards the outer edge to create a pleat. 
press the pleat flat with your fingers, or you could use a seam roller or a stiletto. Then you repeat for marks C and D. Top stitch the pleat an eighth inch along the bottom edge. The finished width of the pocket should measure seven inches wide. Then you're gonna to top stitch each of the top folded edges of the pleats, starting at the top edge and sewing an eighth inch from the fold and stopping about a half inch down from the top edge. You'll have to unfold and refold each of the pleats to sew them. With the right sides face up and the magnets face up, position one side pocket on each main fabric side panel, aligning the sides and bottom edge. Top stitch the pocket in place an eighth inch from the sides and bottom edge. Insert the male half of the magnetic snap centered one inch up from the bottom edge on two of the side flaps. Then take one side flap with a magnetic snap and one without and place them right sides together and align all the edges. Sew together along the sides and bottom curve with a quarter inch seam allowance. Repeat the same process for the remaining two side flaps. Then trim the top corners and turn right side out. Use your fingers to roll the seams and top stitch the sides and bottom curve with a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, with right sides up and the magnets face up, center the top bra edge of one side flap on each side panel, two inches down from the top edge. Top stitch the flap in place a quarter inch from the top bra edge. You can use some basting tape or paper tape to help hold the flap in place. Slide one D-ring over one end of each strap connector so it's in the center. Fold each strap connector in half and align the raw edges. Then center the raw ends of one strap connector on each side panel along the top stitching from the previous step. Make sure the D-ring is towards the top. Sew each strap connector in place an eighth inch from the raw end. Fold each side flap up and top stitch three eighths inch from the seam to conceal the raw edges. For this step, a zipper foot might be helpful so that way you can stitch close to the hardware and maintain your seam allowance. With right sides together, sandwich each end of the 11 inch single side zipper in between two main fabric zipper tabs. Sew together with 5 8 inch seam allowance. Fold each zipper tab away from the zipper and press. Top stitch tabs a quarter inch from the seam. Trim excess fabric even with the side edges of the zipper. With right sides up, center the top edge of the zipper along one long edge of the lining zipper pocket A. If you're right-handed, the zipper should open towards the right side, and if you're left-handed, the zipper should open towards the left side. So position your zipper to open whichever way that you'd like. Then, with right sides together, center one long edge of the main fabric zipper pocket A along the top edge of the zipper. Sew the layers together with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Again, a zipper foot is helpful for this step. Press both pocket A pieces away from the zipper so they are wrong sides together. Top stitch pocket A pieces a quarter inch from the seam. Repeat the same process to attach the lining pocket B and main fabric pocket B pieces to the bottom edge of the zipper. With the right side of the main fabric face up, position the assembled zipper pocket over the main fabric top flap. Top stitch all four sides of the zipper pocket in place an eighth inch from the raw edge. I find it's helpful to use a Teflon foot or a stiletto for this step just to make sure that everything stays nice and flat and even and doesn't shift on you as you sew around the edges. 
Position the 2 inch circle template included in the pattern in each corner of the main fabric top flap and lining top flap. Trace the outer edge of the template from edge to edge and cut along the marked line to round each corner. With right sides together, sandwich one end of the 36 inch double slide zipper in between two main fabric zipper extension pieces. Sew together with a half inch seam allowance. Fold each zipper extension away from the zipper and press. Top stitch extensions a quarter inch from the seam. Trim excess fabric even with the side edges of the zipper. Then you repeat the same process to attach and top stitch the remaining short edges of the extension to the opposite raw end of the zipper. Fold the assembled top zipper in half to find the front and back center. Next, fold the main fabric top flap and the lining top flap in half to find the top and bottom center. With right sides together, match the front center of the zipper with the bottom center of the main fabric top flap. Also match the back center of the zipper with the top center of the flap. Match the raw edges and sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Again, a zipper foot or a narrow foot is very helpful to maintain your seam allowance and don't forget to move those zipper poles out of the way as you sew. After sewing, clip the corners of the zipper to help the zipper lay flat. Then, with the right side down, layer the lining top flap against the main fabric and the wrong side of the zipper. Sew together with 3 8 inch seam allowance and leave about 4 inches unsewn. Turn the assembled top flap right side out by pushing the fabric through the unsewn section. Then turn the raw edges of the unsewn section to the wrong side and top stitch the flap 1 8 inch from the seam. After top stitching, make sure that you caught the unsewn section. Round each corner of the main fabric base and the lining base by using the same process as before. Now we're ready to assemble the bag. With right sides together, align the 9 inch side of each assembled side panel along each 9 inch side of the assembled main fabric front. Sew together with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Trim the top and bottom corners and press the seams open. Again, I like to use a seam roller or a stiletto to help my seams lay flat. Then you repeat the same process to attach the remaining 9 inch sides of each of the side panels to the 9 inch sides of the assembled main fabric back. Then you'll repeat the same process to attach the lining side panels to the lining front and back. But this time, you're going to start sewing with 3 8 inch seam allowance at the top edge and gradually increase to a half inch seam allowance as you reach the bottom. By increasing the seam allowance in the lining, it helps your lining fit better inside your bag because the lining is a little bit smaller at the bottom. After sewing, trim the lining seam allowance to a quarter inch wide. This will help reduce some of the bulk. Fold the main fabric front, back, side panels, top flap, and base to mark the centers. Repeat for the lining front, back, side panels, and base. With right sides together, match the center marks on the main fabric base with the center marks on the assembled front, back, and side panels. Make sure that the shorter edges of the base are even with the side panels. 
Sew around the entire base with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you use lots of sewing clips to hold the layers together. And I find that it's easiest to sew this step with the base against the bed of the machine. If you'd like, you can snip the curves to help relax the fabric if needed. Trim some of the bulk from the corners. Then with main fabrics together, repeat the same process to attach the top flap to the raw edge of the main fabric, front, back, and side panels. With right sides together, match the center marks on the lining base with the center marks on the assembled lining front, back, and side panels. Sew around the entire base with a half inch seam allowance. Then you'll trim the seam allowance to a quarter inch wide. Next, unzip the top flap all the way and with right sides together, Put the lining inside the exterior. Make sure you align the center marks and side seams and raw edges. Use sewing clips to hold in place. Sew around the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance, leaving about six inches unsewn along either the back or the front side. Be conscious of your zipper pulls as you sew. Turn the bag right side out by pushing the exterior and lining through the unsewn section. Then push the lining down into the exterior. Turn the raw edges of the unsewn section to the wrong side. Use your fingers to roll the top seam to make sure the top edge is tight and flat before top stitching. Then you're going to top stitch around the top edge with the 8th inch seam allowance. The last step is to make the adjustable strap. Whether you're using a cotton webbing or a nylon webbing, I recommend to take a lighter and to burn the ends so that way they don't come unraveled. If you're uncomfortable with doing that, you can just turn the raw end of each end of the strap a quarter inch to the wrong side and top stitch it in place. By folding it and top stitching, it's just going to be a little bit more bulky than burning the ends. Start by threading one end of the strap over the center bar of the slider buckle and back down the other side. Fold the end of the strap about one inch to the underside. Top stitch the end of the strap to itself. You can do this by sewing two straight lines across the strap or you can sew a box with the X in the middle. Thread the opposite end of the strap without the slider buckle through a swivel hook. Slide the hook closer to the slider buckle. Make sure your strap isn't twisted and thread the end of the strap over the center bar of the slider buckle. To complete the strap, thread the end through the remaining swivel hook with the hook against the top side of the strap. Fold the end of the strap about an inch and a half to the underside and top stitch the end of the strap to itself just like before. Now that your strap is complete, you can clip each of the swivel hooks to each of the D-rings on your bag. Make sure you share photos of your completed project using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Hudson Hobby Bag. We would love to see what you're organizing inside your bag. I hope you enjoyed making this project and watching this video. For additional help, you can visit sallytomato.com or email jess at sallytomato.com. Happy sewing!